In today's video, we look at the Berserker Board, a presentation of three separate writers who gain a form that makes them lose themselves and crash out on the world around them. Though common writers aren't technically ancient Norse warriors, excluding Odin for haha -ha purposes, and the term crash out has different definitions from going insane and doing something stupid to getting really mad and losing all self control, I've still decided to use these terms both loosely and liberally during the three exhibits presented today. After all, the human language is just mumbo jumbo sounds we make with our mouths, and with five videos, I've convinced you to call purple common writers grimaces, so we're in this boat together. Also note, because we're covering three separate series, I'm gonna do my best to balance making the setup for each exhibit as brief as I can while giving you as much context needed to tag along. With that said, leave a like and let's go ahead and get started with the first exhibit. Alright, so our first exhibit is an easy one, and it's one that's been highly requested since I started doing these videos. And the setup for this one is pretty simple. War has broken out between Toto and Hokuto for the Pandora's box, and Sinto and Banjo are having a hard time with Grease and the Hokuto trio. With the show's meta calling for slash drivers in this arc, including Banjo going all oonga boonga when he wears his for too long, both Sinto and the trio feel left behind in power, so the greatest nigga in rider history finds a way to amp all four of them with the same device. Later. When Sinto is confronted by Evolt, who's Mr. Bloodstock at the time, he offers him the hazard trigger. According to Evolt, by attaching it to his build driver, he'll gain the power needed to stop his homie from roid raging, but it will have the chance of him losing himself in the process. This is further expanded upon, as the fish face nigga says that prolonged use of it can make you attack everything and everyone. Hence the in the rogues video I say cats, dogs, chickens, frogs, the whole night. And in hindsight, this is wild as shit to think about. Evo basically just said, hey man, are you scared that your friend's gonna crash out? Well here, take this device that'll most likely make you crash out. That'll save him. This nigga Evo really the best to ever do it. While in the middle of stopping Gintoku from invading Hokuto, Sento arrives to find Banjo successfully pulling off a 3v1 reverse jumping. And no, I'm not doubting Banjo's skills, but we can clearly tell he's roid raging in the process. So in order to save his homie from possibly crashing out, he equips the forbidden shysty. Real shonen, real storytelling, this is what I'm talking, this is what I live! The fight starts off with the boys and the trio swapping hands, and Sento is flexing his newfound power like it's nobody's business. Sento attempts to calm Banjo down from his Roy rage, but Banjo ain't having it, and when the two break apart, Sento's shot clock of consciousness expires. His rationality goes out the window, and his hands then become rated E for everyone. His opening move is beating the belt off of his best friends in front of the Hokuto trio. The same trio who was getting they ass whooped by said friend before L Black Ass showed up. Me personally, I would have discovered the ability to swim through concrete if it meant getting the fuck up out of there. You just watched them two have a BL moment like what, two or three episodes ago or some shit like that? And Bill now just racked up a DV charge in front of you? What the fuck you think about to happen to you? <laughs> Boy, I woulda burnt rubber. But they can't hear me though, so Blue Man tries to sneak him, but ends up getting countered by a two-piece. Bill continues that shysty pressure on the other two until they're knocked out of their monster forms. But the same couldn't be said for Blue Man, who gets gripped up and has to watch Bill crank that shit for a finisher. That two-piece from earlier must have been coated with CTE because ain't no way I'ma sit here and let you crank that finisher in my face like that like you soldier boy tell him. He, a blue man must have been discombobulated or something. And I honestly would be too. Think about it. This nigga died the weekend he got a power up. Speaking of, finisher's ready. And builds his blue man with that miasma lightning stun and then kicks him with one of the most diabolical front side kicks in rider history. Oh. You 
had to, this to me, this is one of those Toku moments where like you had to be there when it debuted type of deal. It, it, it's crazy. This shit was crazy. People are sad because the plot, but we ain't here for none of that. So we just gonna move to the second half of this part of uh, Hazardville versus Greece. Much later. The plot demands Sento and Kazumi have a mano a mano fight for all of the metaphorical marbles. And just like Banjo, the roid rage of the slash driver amps Kazumi more and more as their battle progresses. Feeling pushed into a corner, Sento throws on that hazard shiesty and does his best to stay in control. But unfortunately for him, this is the crash out video, not the I'll face myself video. So you know what happens next. Now in Berserker mode, he gives Grease no room to breathe. And when Bill did the switch to Hawk Gatlin, I knew it was up. Nigga up the pole in a fist fight. Mm -mm -mm. This nigga is devious. Bill flies into the air, ups the blick on Grease before diving down and then making that nigga fly into the air. Bill looks up and cranks his finisher at the same time, and he's clearly ready to wrap this shit up. Hazard Build is a textbook example of something that I like to call the Shot Clock Berserker. This is the type of Berserker that has a limited amount of time to use an immense amount of power before it overwhelms their psyche and makes them a mindless destructive warrior. With a lot of power and a limited amount of time to use it, these forms usually get phased out or used as the basis for an all new upgrade. In Build's case, it's both as two niggas make the Hazard form fall to the wayside. In Rogue's case, he was the first one to mollywop Hazard, and even after taking an overflow kick, it was the first real damage made to him from any of the fights they've had against him since they started squabbling, and this is fight number three. Also, when Gintoku makes the comment that Rabbit Rabbit has all the power of the Berserker minus the crash out part, then we knew it was never going to make a real return again. In Evolt's case, he's the world's greatest sandbagger. He and Sento fought again, mind you, it's in the same place where Sento first used the hazard trigger, because he loves to do that kind of shit. He goads Sento into using the trigger, and as he shits on Rabbit Tank Sparkling, the suit that he lost to the first time they fought, you can tell something's up. When Sento eventually does put on the trigger and go all Oonga Boonga, Evolt is excited and gets right back up after taking an assault. My man even says, get to the level I want hinting that Evolt had way more in his duffel than he was letting on. This shit also comes ahead when the hazard suit comes back when Evolt has his actual belt, and then that's just the Evolt field day. Overall, hazard build is cool, but outside of giving Sinto PTSD, it just didn't do enough for me. So we'll go ahead and move on to our second exhibit. Before we get started on our second exhibit, here's two fun facts. Number one, I hate Kamen Rider Geo, the entirety of it just all everything that exists about it. And number two, this crash out debuts the same day the Saber Rye Watch clapped up Oma Geo in a TTF special. So Saber may not be a perfect show, but it has a special place in my heart. The setup for this one is also pretty simple. After dealing with Kami Joe and the Grimace Sword shenanigans, Toma and the Sword of Light, aka Yuri, fight the Magid, who are now formed using humans rather than the old fashioned way. Meanwhile, everyone in the Sword of Logos has turned against him, unaware that there is a traitor amongst them. Gee, I wonder who could it be? Hashtag that's the stuff. When Slash and Tomo make plans to visit the southern base to meet the Master of Logos himself, they apparently pick the same day Storius wanted to visit as he wants to steal a forbidden book, like the sealed away long ago for being a threat to mankind kind of forbidden. With the help of a person I'm pretty sure used to make sushi, Toma discovers this, realizes this isn't good, and puts that shit on and calls Iso on Storius. And these two put on that spectacular sword play I love to see in a show about swords. Storius starts reading pages out of the Necronomicon, and then suddenly a demonic chain tendril pops out, long enough for everyone to see and wiggles all around the battlefield. Toma manages to take advantage of the Necronomicon being on the ground, and when he grabs it, he grabs it before Ligiel. Le 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 
I'ma call him Lili. He grabs her before Lili joins the fight, and then Lili starts attacking a formless Toma. Obviously this isn't good, and to make matters worse, the book opens revealing its dark content and chain to Toma. And then, this happens. <laughs> First off, Toma doing all that grunting like he on the toilet or something. Secondly, this lets off an essence so sinister that it stops the Royal Rumble that's somewhere else in the city and has all the other writers coming that way. And finally, this nigga's eyes change colors just like Puto Terra. I can see the writing on the wall. I smell a debut coming. This scene lets us know exactly what type of timing this form is about to be on. <laughs> Lily saw all that and said, is that book supposed to scare me? Yes! Yes it should, nigga! Look at his posture. Look at his neck. He wasn't doing this shit 10 minutes ago. But he can't hear me though, so he gets command grabbed by Saber and assaulted by a 5 hit combo. And watch this shit. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. If I'm fighting somebody, and they decide to hang 10 to hit me, I need to contemplate how and what I did to make this nigga that mad. Lily succeeds on the dodge QTE, but the attempt is still enough to instill fear within him. Storia slides in and then the two attempt to jump Saber, but he Uno reverses the situation with his best iteration of the Berserker Barrage. This ass whooping is so bad that both the Swordsman and Lily question if this is even Toma, while Toma in question is still putting belt to ass. After rounding up both these losers together, Berserker Saber decides to wrap this shit up. <laughs> Stop the cap! <laughs> Stop the cap right now! Stop the cap! No bullshit, bro! Homie's been getting his ass whooped for the past several exchanges, including the failed jumping with Story. But now Lily has the strength to win? So does my actual reaction was. Are you serious right now, bro? And you know what? Let's just see how this plan unfolds. <laughs> Toma just hit a finisher so crazy, everybody, friend and foe, got hit in an 11 foot radius. If Toma didn't buy these niggas a beer or at least say I'm sorry after this, then frankly, I would have started beating that nigga while he was unconscious the next time he did it. There would have been a size 10 shoe in his face. Please believe that. Later. Plot stuff happens and we find out that the book is not only from the Logos is Forbidden Library, but this one in particular holds a soul filled with such deep sadness that unless there is someone out there who can give it that better help treatment, it will continue to go all oonga boonga against any and everything. In that time, Toma and Ogami have a meaningful duel, which leads to them joining forces. And Lily, salty about the ill he took last episode, starts attacking the city looking for Toma. When Toma and Yuri get there, they put that shit on to do battle. But in the middle of the scuffle, Lily starts taking steroids and then gets a substantial power boost. Now, Draconic Knight and X Swordsman are exceptionally powerful by themselves, so together they should be a force to be reckoned with. But Lily's power now surpasses both of them as he now is performing a reverse jumping. Before Lily could send Saber to the Gulag, the Necronomicon appears to save him and wasting no time, Saber throws his own version of his black forces back on and begins to while out. <laughs> this nigga hit Lily with his helmet blade. Wow. Nobody has or will ever do this again. Lily, I got one piece of advice for you, my man. But he can't hear me though, so instead he's getting that ground and pound from Saber. Saber then pauses Lily's ass whooping and then goes to start attacking Yuri. And much like my baby, when he starts swinging his toy sword around, Yuri is immediately overwhelmed considering he's not trying to hurt Toma. 
When the goat shows up and clocks the situation, he immediately gets his wonder books taken from him by Saber. And then Saber uses the power of Lion Sinki to not only counter Lily's finisher, but use that time to use one of his own, packing him up in the process. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I'm getting cooked. <laughs> Saber does turn his attention to Mei, but this is ultimately stopped by Yuri and a surprise visit from Caliber, which technically would be Kento's first reappearance, but we wouldn't know that until the next episode, or if you watch my video about the crash out of Logos. That same video also shows us the last time this form is used until Toma makes the sad soul in the book happy thus giving him the more powerful and yet more ugly elemental dragon. Primitive Dragon is an example of what I like to call the classic berserker, following all of the traditional depictions of media Oonga Boonga along the lines of like the Incredible Hulk. Once in use, it makes an uncontrollable battle machine attacking anything or anyone in their way. Primitive Dragon and forms like Puto Terra and Fang Joker have one primary function outside of the crashing out part, and that's called self-preservation, but the catalyst for this is usually a or a set of negative emotions. Primitive Dragon lasts all of four episodes and unlike Hazard Build, it's never seen again after it changes. This works for the story as Saber is a show about cycles and how the most vicious ones can be broken and replaced with something better. However, I personally believe that we didn't see enough of this form. Perhaps a true Primitive Dragon versus Caliber fight could have happened. Technically, Caliber would have been Kento at that point, and it would have scratched several what ifs in my brain, but we can't focus on that now, because we got one more exhibit to focus on, and honestly, this is my favorite Yuya Takahashi crash out. So, I've saved the best for last, and this one is also one of the most highly requested of this year. And since this video is already too damn long, I gotta speed through this. Picking up immediately after the defeat of Ark through a fight involving the power of family and teamwork in a video we've already covered, Auto and Hirobi unfortunately still don't see eye to eye. Hirobi still wants to pack up humanity, and Auto is still saying, can't we all just get along? With the discovery of Ark being able to use great malice like a respawn, Hirobi calling for a robo revolution, and Izu running in to attempting to stop the violence, this all leads to Hirobi blicking Izu and Aruto arriving too little too late. In what is in fact his lowest and most vulnerable moment in the series, evil Izu appears and tempts him with the power of Ark 1, to which he agrees to take him. And I don't blame him in the slightest, my man is hurting right now. As Hirobi continues his pack up humanity plan, he's accosted by Ames officers, but just as Jin shows up to stop the violence, a new challenger suddenly appears. Yo, who the fuck is this? Ark has returned. Not reborn through Hirobi, but through Aruto on some Darth Vader type shit. And just like Vader, he lets the hate flow through him. You probably didn't see it the first time, but when he showed up, the impact alone destroys like a good chunk of Hirobi's forces. Then he shows the rest of them his best One Punch Man impression. So now it's just Hirobi. And since he technically didn't beat Ark by himself, his ass should have left earlier. But instead, he tries to fight back, but gets manhandled by one of the best suits in the series. Jin attempts to save his daddy, but gets countered by an AoE malice wave that also hits Vulcan and Valkyrie. And since the AIM officers just think this is Ark reborn, Vulcan attempts to get a shot in. But... This nigga just caught a bullet without turning around. I would have took my belt off and I would have been halfway down the street if this happened to me. I mean, I love Hirobi, but not like that. Mm -mm -mm. I, I, I would have left. But they can't hear me though, so instead they sit there and let Ark 1 set up a level 3 finish. Hey yo, what the fuck? 
Before Hirobi is recycled in front of everyone, the arc crash out timer expires and he detransforms, revealing Aruto to everyone before leaving. Later. The gang suspects that Ark got a Zenkai boost after getting jumped and somehow got so strong he can hack minds now, hence why Aruto's being on evil. With Guy, they manage to intercept Ark 1 on his way to the OG Mitsubo Jinrai hideout and they put that shit on to beat some sense into him. Fight starts with all of them getting every single one of their attacks weaved by Ark 1 and the majority of this fight is really a series of Weave Nation QTEs for Ark 1. They have a stare off that makes the trio question why he isn't attacking until Ark 1 attempts to leave the fight. The trio tried to stop him but my man said <laughs> This is worse than just getting beat up. This is the most disrespectful shit ever. It's one thing to beat my ass because I'm in your way, cause that means you respect me enough to shoot the fade. But Auditor refuses to hit them like they're made out of wet cardboard. I know they're weaker than you, but that weak? Nigga, I I'm telling you, I we woulda had to fight. Thousand must agree with me, as he tries to take advantage of the moment, but gets Uno reversed and his driver destroyed in Arc 1's hand. The officers go up for a team finish, but... <sighs> I, I just gotta play it. Not gonna lie, this is a crazy ass violation. You have dealt no damage to them, yet you have rendered all of their transformations useless. Yeah, I take back my we gotta fight thing for disrespecting me. No, 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 no. You could have killed me at any point in this fight and chose not to. Yeah, well you got it. You got it, bro. You you the one. Rather than attacking, Aruto detransforms, states that his beef is with Hirobi and Hirobi alone, then leaves to go get his get back. For Aruto's friends, the idea of him being consumed by malice isn't impossible, it's just weird to think about. Like finding out a friend of yours who doesn't drink suddenly got a DUI. On the surface level, you can't believe it. But Guy has dropped the bar that malice exists within all of us, and the problem arises from its potential for contagion. This is made worse as the data they get back proves that Aruto is in fact not being mind controlled by Ark, but is 100% doing this of his own volition. Meaning that the last two things he did is even worse to think about. This is like the equivalent of like running into Spider-Man and he ain't got no jokes, no quips, no nothing. He just quietly beating your ass. I, I don't want that Spider-Man. That, that's the worst kind to deal with. It's, it's that level of bad that hirobi has got to deal with. Speaking of, much later, Aruto finally pulls up on Hirobi, who has a new squad, and after both of them say a bunch of heavy stuff, they put that shit on to have a death match. Fight starts with Arc 1 tanking a bunch of gunshots before clapping up four robots with one hit. In the most devious fight I've ever seen Aruto in, he just juggernauts his way through the crowd. Hirobi is using every opportunity he can to get a lick in, but his attacks don't really do anything. And it's slowing down Arc 1 maybe? But it's not stopping him, and eventually, all that's left is just Hirobi. And then, his real Molly Bob starts. <laughs> I gotta talk about it. This is the hardest shit in the world. From what I gathered, when used offensively, it's implied that every hit is a kill shot. And even when Hirobi is on the receiving end and not dying in one hit, it's implied that it hurts real, real bad. And I know damn well Hirobi is just a robot, but them hits feel that brutal. Outside of the dodging ones looking hard as hell, I surmise that that just means that Aruto was letting them know that there was no way that they could actually stop him and that they weren't on his list to clap up. Hence why he removes their transformations rather than like destroying them. But don't get it twisted. That's the same thing. Technically, because like destroying their transformation process destroys them from being writers, effectively discontinued. You get it. 
Anyway, back to the fight, it is quite clear to the audience that Arc 1 is putting Belt to ass. So much so, that even if Hirobi is getting licks in, he's taking more damage than dishing it out. And after getting knocked to the ground, he tries a surprise attack with his stinker. But that gets Uno reversed and is used against him as he gets yanked closer to his op and eats a mean ass gut punch. Then, he gets hit by one of the nastiest combos in this series. <laughs> Yo, Har Harobi, I think you should leave. <laughs> Harobi, if I was you and I watched my nephew go emo, destroy two of my armies, and keep hitting me with these damn rage drive combos, I would have taken my belt off, I would have beat feet, and I would have changed my name to like Construction or Larry or some shit. Because. What can you do other than take an L today? Make a comeback? Stupid. If you believe that, then boy, do I have some beach property in North Dakota to sell you. But, and say it with me, he can't hear me though. So instead, he tries to go band for band with Arc 1. I did it to Lily. I gotta do it to you too, Hirobi. Are you serious right now, bro? And of course, I have to show you how it worked out for him. <laughs> This exhibit is a textbook tried and true crash out. For our buddy Autoto, his main support system has now been taken away by the one person who stood defiant against his dreams. At his lowest, he is tempted by the figurative devil, Evil Izu, taking powers to form a dark version of his lively green suit. And with said dark powers, he rains pain and suffering on the purple rider who started all of this. If this all sounds extremely familiar, don't worry, you're not tripping. The guy who wrote this also wrote Geats, so the whole Darth Tycoon arc is pulled from this exact moment in time. Oh, he copied my whole fucking flow! Oh, word for shit. word, bar for bar! Yes, this all feels out of left field, as it's used more as a plot twist than something that has been slowly building up like Tycoon. But I do give it points for feeling natural, if that makes sense. It was only a matter of time until Autoto got put in a situation where Izu would eventually get recycled in his face, but it was always followed by the question of who. Thouser or Ark doing it makes sense on a villain level, as one's a scumbag and the other one is a physical representation of malice, and hurting Autoto is just fun to do for both of them. But Hirobi doing it feels like a betrayal to both himself and acts as some poetic irony or a monkey's paw, as the malice he created serves as the catalyst for the revival of Ark. But like I said before, all it takes is one bad day and some godly black forces to make any sensible person crash out. So yeah, that's the video. Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end. If you wanna buy toys to support the channel, you can do so by shopping on Hobby Links Japan and use my affiliate link in the description. And uh, yeah, get this video to a thousand likes and I'll do a part two. Give me $5, for real, this one's long. This is a long video, give me $5.